Hello, it's me, Joe, again. A few years ago, I made a video about playing a basic train beat, and it's been very, very popular. And lots of people have asked me about uh, the train beat since I made that video, and uh, I've been meaning to make some follow-up videos explaining how to play some snare and bass variations uh, to make the beat a little bit more interesting and varied, of course. And um, here we are, many years later, I'm going to get stuck in and uh, produce those videos. So today I'm going to start with some uh, simple snare drum variations uh, that you can add to make your train beat a little bit more interesting. First, I'm just going to remind you what the original train beat sounds like. It's very useful for lots of styles of music, but uh, in sort of bluegrass, uh, old rock and roll and rockabilly styles, especially in country music and so on. Um, and it's a good beat to get into to develop your coordination and also your ability to play accents um, and, you know, get the contrast between softer and lighter sounds that you're making on your drums. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, and if I do it at sort of more normal speed that you'd hear it played at, something like this maybe. We're going to look at two snare drum variations today. The first variation adds an extra accent after the backbeat. So that would be on the two and or the four and or both of those if you want to. The second variation we're going to look at adds an accent before the backbeat, which would be on the one and or the three and. So the first one sounds like this. One and two and three and four and 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 and the second one sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And at speed, it sounds a bit like this. One, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two and three, four and one, two, three, two and three and four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and. And the second one sounds like this. One, two, three and four. I just want to recap what I showed you in the original train beat video. To start with, the basic beat involved using an upstroke and a downstroke to produce the uh, differences in sound. We have a soft stroke playing up and a louder stroke playing down. As I pick up my stick in preparation for the back beat for the loud stroke, I let the stick just kiss the drum softly and I get my upstroke. It's a very efficient way of getting those dynamic differences. I'm just using gravity to let the stick develop some velocity as it hits the drum. Okay, so I've got up is quiet, down is loud. And then the left fills in, where's the drum gone? Up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap. That was our original pattern. And that produces the backbeat on the two and four. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. And uh, make sure you're feeling reasonably comfortable with that pattern before you move on to learn these other patterns. Um, so again, uh, check out my video. Um, and I'm, I'm intending to make some more videos explain this whole idea of upstrokes and downstrokes. Now, uh, you may play your up and down strokes using this whipping motion, also known to some as a sort of molar stroke, where I'm pulling the stick from behind. Uh, you may play your upstroke by picking the stick up from the beginning up, down. Up doesn't really matter. Whichever of those techniques you use, or a mixture of the two, sometimes my hand does one or the other when I'm not thinking about it. Um, I prefer doing this whipping motion most of the time. Okay, now the first snare variation we're going to uh, learn is going to be instead of just up, down, we're going to go up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, one. And three and four and two and three and four and and the motion I'm doing here is pretty exaggerated. If you're playing faster or softer, you don't need to play this big motion. 
but doing these big exaggerated motions can really help your body get used to the movements that it needs to make that translate into smaller motions later on. So I recommend you do this slowly and carefully up first. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Okay? Practice that patiently. If you're not used to doing this, it might feel a little bit fiddly and it could take some time to get used to. But don't worry about that. Uh, I think it doesn't get mentioned enough that um, a lot of what happens when we're learning an instrument takes a long time and a lot of repetition. So be really patient with it. Let your body get used to the actions. Don't try to speed up until you feel like the coordination is really settling in. Okay, now, once you're comfortable doing that, you can add the feet. In the original and basic train beat pattern, we played the right foot on the one and three and the left foot on the two and four. That means bass drum on one and three and hi-hat on two and four. If you're a left-handed person playing the kit the other way around, obviously you reverse that. So the, the bass drum and hi-hat pattern is this. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. And we're gonna have up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. Okay. Now again, if you're a bit new to this, you might find the coordination of these movements a little bit tricky. When, <coughs> excuse me, when my right hand goes up, my right foot goes down on the one. Right. So we have up, up, down, down. Then my right hand comes down, and the hi hat comes down with the left foot. So we have this. Uh, right hand and left foot coordination, which can be a little bit tricky again if you haven't done a lot of it. And even if you have actually, I find that I need to be a little bit focused uh, when I've got a lot of uh, interaction between my right hand and my left foot and they have to sound really accurate together. So again, I recommend doing this really slowly and count out loud while you're doing it. So it would go like this. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. Down, down. Practice really slowly, listen carefully for the accuracy between your hands and feet. And the left hand is always on its own, but even then getting the upstroke to happen nicely and the downstroke, everything to be nicely coordinated and timed takes a lot of focus. Down, down, up, up, down, down. It's not so easy talking over this. I'm doing it. Up, up, down, 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 up. Down, down, up, up, down, down. I just the mic. The next variation is going to be up, down, down, up. Again, that produces an accent uh, on the and before the backbeat. So you get the one and two accented, or the three and four accented. And it goes like this it's up, down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. Now, uh, you might have noticed that that's the same sequence of events, two ups and two downs, and it's just displaced, um, sort of just shoved along by one eighth note. Um, but coordinating that can feel very different. So even though it's the same hand movement, that sort of swimming doggy paddle motion, um, it takes a little getting used to putting it in a different place. And there's two other permutations of that you can also do, but I'm not gonna look at that today. Um, so again, one more time, we've got, um, I need to keep my left hand in the air to start with. Up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 down. And again, practice that on its own. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. And get really comfortable with those movements before adding the feet. But now we will add the feet. Again, remember, bass drum on one and three, and the hi-hat on two and four, uh, even though now we're only thinking of two beats really, so we could just say the bass drum on the one and the hi-hat on the two. And it looks something like this. Up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, up. I think my hands have gone a bit wild there. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, 
down, down. Once you're feeling comfortable with one of those patterns or, or both of them, um, you can start trying to reincorporate them into a standard train beat. So, uh, for example, what, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play a bar where the first half of the bar is going to be the single accent on the two, just, a, just the back beat, and the second half of the bar is going to have an extra accent on the four and. And so it looks like this. I'm going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and four and one and two and three and four and up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, down. You should say this out loud to yourself as well. Up, up, down, down. Down really helps to get the movements into your body. Up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up. Down, up, up, down, down. Okay, next, do the reverse. Play the extra accent on the two and and uh, just a single back beat on the four, like this. Up, up, down, down, up, down. Up, up, down, down, up, down. Up, up, do it slowly, listen carefully. Up, up, down, down, make sure you've got the hands and feet coordinated nice. Up, up, down, down, up. Down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down. Now, you could try and play uh, some longer phrases and improvise with that pattern by uh, including sometimes the extra accent and leaving it out at other times. For example, like this. Uh, again, I'm going to do it slowly. Up, down, up, down, one, two. Four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, two, three, four, and and so on. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other pattern. We're going to play uh, the first half of the bar with just the single backbeat, one accent on the two, and um, we're then going to add an extra accent on the three and. Bear in mind with this pattern, you need to anticipate and play the first upstroke after the two on the two and. So it goes like this. Up, down, up, up, down, down. Up, down, up, up, down, down. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, Two and three and four. One, two and three and four. One, two and three and four. Okay, and now we're going to play that pattern in the reverse. We're going to have um, the extra accent on the one and before the backbeat on the two, and then just only backbeat on the four without any other accents there. Um, remember, you need to anticipate that the four and is going to be upstroke. And when I start the pattern, I need to start with my left stick in the air uh, as a right handed person. So it goes like this. Up, down, down, up, down, up, 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 up. Once you're comfortable with that pattern, uh, also improvise on that. So uh, play the basic train beat pattern and then add. Uh, uh, whenever you like, uh, some accents on the one and or the three and, and see how you can mix that up. Again, go slowly at first, focus on how cleanly you're playing those strokes and how well your uh, hands and feet are coordinated, as well as trying to incorporate the ups and downs. When you start improvising, you might uh, have got to the point where you don't need to think consciously about the ups and downs, but you need to practice a lot and try and get that stuck in your body so it's automatic.
So the final part of the process is to practice improvising with both of those snare drum variations. Um, again, if you've, you've got to the point that you're doing this comfortably, you won't need to think about the ups and downs too much. Uh, it might be useful to count, but really, once you get to the stage of improvising, you want to just let it go and try and feel it. Uh, I don't think it's a bad idea to use a metronome when you're practicing. Um, it'll help you keep a good tempo. Uh, it'll help you uh, restrain yourself from practicing at a faster tempo than you should when you're first getting used to it. And it's a, a good way of keeping a record of, of how your progress is going tempo-wise. Anyway, so now I'm just going to improvise a little bit using both of those snare drum uh, variations. I'll do it a little bit faster to give you a sense of what it feels like. Uh, to play at, at the sort of musical speed, if you like. And that's about that. So uh, again, you can develop that to any kind of speed you like. Uh, the train beat works really nicely if you play it with sticks on a, a snare drum, or you can you can use hot rods. That sounds really good. You can use brushes as well. So uh, I would practice uh, using all sorts of different striking implements on different surfaces. Um, again, on your snare drum, on your practice pad, whatever. If you have an electrical thingy like this whatever, whatever. So that about wraps it up for a couple of fairly straightforward snare drum variations. Bearing in mind still that you should practice slowly and with focus and be patient, allow your body to get used to all the moves and uh, try and think about producing a nice sound. And don't worry if it takes you some time to get this up to a faster speed. Uh, some train beat songs are really fast. So you might have to develop your technique quite a bit to play the faster ones. Meanwhile, um, I'm intending to make some more videos. I'm not going to leave it for years this time. Uh, I'm going to add some videos showing some bass drum variations. And there's really a lot you could do by developing different accent patterns and learning how to play that with the bass on one and three and hi-hat on two and four that would uh, open up, uh, I don't know, a whole world of stuff you could do with um, this kind of groove. And also it would be a nice um, kind of foundation for then developing some other snare drum related stuff. It's, uh, it's all good as far as I'm concerned, to work on this stuff. It's very useful. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this, if you'd like me to cover any other topics, uh, and obviously give me a thumbs up on the like button, it's really helpful, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to be notified of my future videos. I'm producing them regularly now, so it's worth clicking. And don't forget to click the little bell thing down there, which will let you know every time I put out a new video. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, now go away and practice.